This mutation is called Catch the Train and it is being played on the Bovine Express. We have three mutators active. We have Speed Freaks, we have Short Sighted, and we have Afraid of the Dark. Um, I know a lot of people do not like Afraid of the Dark because it is very, very annoying because it severely limits vision. But uh, fortunately for you Afraid of the Dark haters, uh, Afraid of the Dark is bugged because uh, there is also Short Sighted. So as you can see over here, um, the camera is not obviously not focused on the Overlord. The camera is probably focused on here for uh, for Zigara, but uh, the Overlord still has that limited vision. So it appears that Short Sighted overrides Afraid of the Dark because it is a vision limiting mutator. So uh, eventually, so what can happen is like all your units actually have that limited vision of Short Sighted. So Afraid of the Dark doesn't even really make. Um, that much of an impact on the game. Obviously, your your fog of war is different. You know, your, your unexplored areas are going to disappear, but uh, the impact of Afraid of the Dark is significantly uh, lowered as a result of short sighted. So you can see over here, Alarak is uh, already using the uh, photon overcharge to uh, fast expand, and uh, the Nexus will be coming down soon. So let's have a look at the masteries while we have things set up. So we can see here that um, Zigara is going for the Zigara energy regeneration, the Zergling evasion, and the intensified frenzy. And uh, Alarak is going for the Alarak attack damage, the empower me, and three points into the overcharge. So uh, that's pretty much uh, the standard uh, choices for, uh, for the commander masteries. And uh, both players are uh, doing well in their production. They're just going macroing up, just getting up as strong, getting up their economies as uh, as strong as possible uh, so they can handle the layer stages of the attack wave. The other thing to also note is that this mission is relatively straightforward. Because of these mutators, uh, as long as you know the attack wave patterns, as long as you're aware of where the trains are going to be spawning, this mission should not play out very differently to a regular uh, Oblivion Express mission. Uh, the only thing that you will notice is the attack waves hit your base a little bit earlier because of speed freaks. That's pretty much it. As long as you know where the attack waves are coming from, you know what to expect. They're not actually too difficult to deal with, and this one will be relatively straightforward. So we can see over here, Alarak's overcharge uh, had messed up here because of the short subvision. The overcharge ended up clearing uh, Zagara's uh, main rocks as well as a result, leaving some of these uh, gas rocks uh, here. But uh, Zagara's army has uh, cleaned up that side, and Alarak will be uh, able to produce uh, the... Um, from the expansion as well. The first attack wave has spawned and Zagara is already in position to clean up and this is what I mean, the attack wave like, reaches really really quickly. If you're not paying attention you'll just get ninjaed by an attack wave and end up, uh, end up losing your base. So make sure you know the mission timings and make sure you know where the attack waves are coming from uh, because the attack wave markers will not be available on the main map uh, nor will the trains. So knowing the train order, I think a lot of people who do play co-op regularly will be you know, they'll have the innate sense of where the attack the trains are coming from. Attack waves are a little bit less uh, less known by uh, the general co-op community, so uh, just make sure that you're aware, or you just pull up the timings on another monitor, or you just have the timings down, just so that you're aware of where these things are coming from, and uh, you should really have no problems dealing with it. It's going to be a very, very straightforward mission, there's really nothing much else to say. Very standard build here for, uh, for Zagara and for Alarak. In terms of production, Alarak is producing his Death Council now, and he'll be going for an Ascendant build, and Zagara, we will see what the plan for Zagara is. Zagara is a little bit tricky on this mission. Uh, she's not particularly well built to deal with, uh, with Oblivion Express. Uh, she has a lot of suicide use in these trains, like smashing bailings into the trains. Generally speaking, it's not a good idea, but you know, Zagara here just doesn't care. Uh, you, know, you're, you have an Alarak ally, and... Uh, Alarak is able to end up clearing out a lot of things very very quickly. So you can you can actually do whatever you want here with Zagara. Just have some fun, smash some bailings into uh, into the train. So as you can see here, we are dealing with a um, a classic air composition. Uh, this is probably one of the better uh, builds. Uh, again, like I said, the Zagara doesn't really care, but uh, it does make it a little bit tricky for. Uh, for Zagara if she doesn't have any Scourges, so we'll see if Zagara is going to end up making some Scourge or she's going to be relying on Alarak's Ascendants to start clearing, because once Alarak's Ascendants come out, 
there's pretty much nothing Amon can do to deal with uh, with them. You can see here, there's a pullback on the Bailings, and uh, Zagar is in position in front here to deal with this next attack wave. You want to use Zagar's Bailing Barrage as uh, as effectively as possible. You want to use it as much as possible and save your Bailings for the actual train or the uh, or the defenders of the train. So uh, there we go. It's just, it's just small things that just can make your life so much easier. And now we can see the Senate Archives is already done and is starting to research away. A bunch of Ascendants are already spawned and just gonna be waiting just to have these units off on the side here. And you can see Alarak has put down also a pylon here and a pylon there. So that pylon was overcharged earlier to deal extra damage to the train. Again, like I said, it was not really necessary, but again, just playing as effectively as possible, as efficiently as possible, always just good habit and co-op. So this pylon is gonna be overcharged in case the train comes into position, so it'll just provide you with extra damage. Uh, this mission also, uh, to say if you wanna play Alarak, is actually really easy to solo because of the photon overcharges. That photon overcharge and Alarak can be used to take out the first train uh, without any assistance from an ally. Obviously, if you're soloing, you're not gonna have an ally present, but uh, there you go. So uh, we have a bunch of scouts here that get eaten up by these Hydralisks, and uh, there we go. This train is now vulnerable, and we're ready to go. Alarak's ascendants are not out yet, so it is uh, relatively unfortunate, but uh, they will be ready for the next train, and uh, that will provide Alarak with way more than enough DPS to be able to clean up the rest of the mission uh, pretty much solo. You see a bunch of banelings on this side, they're just gonna get smashed into the train here, because you know, Zagara is floating a lot of banelings, and now... Uh, yeah, the train is within range of overcharge, overcharge comes down, just to provide a little bit of extra damage, you know, you don't really want to float your overcharges, and, uh, you know, like I said, this game was hyper-efficient, there's nothing really much you, uh, you can be, you can afford to be as wasteful as you want, because the chances of losing this mission are, uh, especially with me playing with CG, is pretty much nil. I think if we lost this mission, I think I would have quit co-op completely, because uh, that would have been really, really embarrassing. Um, this mission is actually this mutation is, is is a treat. If you guys want to farm bounties, this is the mutation to do it on because uh, yeah, that's how easy this mutation is. So both commanders now are waiting for the next. Uh, this and Alarak descendants are now out. You can see the amount of damage these descendants are doing, and they're not even maxed out yet. So descendants instantly delete that attack wave, and now Alarak is going to start powering up his descendants. He's going to start warping in supplicants, some more descendants just to be able to get some more use out, and now we can see some more pylons coming up to prevent the supply block for Alarak, and uh, these descendants are just going to start feeding on these supplicants, just getting stronger, and the power overwhelming buff is really, really important. Uh, a lot of people get the ascendants out, but they just wait for the ascendants to uh, use up their energy before they sacrifice. You can cast sacrifice every 60 seconds in uh, in the game, and until your ascendants are about 5 or 6 stacks, you should be manually casting sacrifice to build up your ascendant stacks and uh, their power level. You can see over here, these, these scouts instantly just get annihilated by these ascendants, and uh, this is where the power level is. And once you, you'll see the amount of damage that comes up once the ascendants actually start wrapping up. You can see here, that's a quarter of the train's HP instantly gone in one shot of the Ascendant, uh, in, in one wave of the Ascendant uh, uh, Mind Blast. You can see another 50%, 30% goes down here, and now Zagar is just going to end up cleaning up with the rest of the Banelings, and uh, over here, that train ends up going down. Uh, in fact, I think I might be able to show you the train damage. So, uh, Zagara has dealt a total of 17,000 train damage, and 10,000 train damage has been dealt by Alarak now. Again, as you can see, these sands are not built up yet. Once they start glowing red, that's when you know like things are getting serious. Zagara is ended up pulling up the side now. And Zergling Invasion is providing a lot of good value that Zergling actually dodged while the Dark Templar swipes. And uh, now Alarak is going to be moving into position over here. There's a ping on this side. Apparently some uh, some units managed to get away, but it's an overcharge here that gets, uh, cleans up these Corsairs. And now a lot of damage goes down from these Mind Blasts. Again, some more sacrifices on the descendants, waiting for the cooldown of Mind Blast. And then the Mind Blast goes down, and cleans up that bonus objective. So that is the first bonus objective done for Alarak. And you can see a huge warp in the supplicants here. And this is just to keep these descendants fed. As Alarak has more and more ascendants, uh, you're going to require a lot more supplicants to keep these ascendants just maxed out. There's also Havoc here, just to increase the amount of damage that's being dealt to the trains and to provide a little bit of detection. Again, you can see these Mind Blasts instantly clean up pretty much everything that is there. Unit-wise, there are a total of 13 or 16, 18 ascendants right now. And uh, that is basically the Alarak Co-op Caster, which is just a little bit blank here, but uh, that's responsible for the photon overcharges in the game.
as you can see, there are 18 descendants now on the map. This is more than enough. Generally, you can get away with about... I, I usually do about 8. Uh, I do about 12 ascendants. But uh, when I'm playing Oblivion Express, I try and have a little bit of fun and just max out on ascendants and supplicants. If I'm floating gas, I'll build some more ascendants. You can see over here, the amount of damage these ascendants do instantly ends up shredding a lot of the units there. And uh, now this train is left vulnerable. And you can see this train pretty much almost gets one shot by the ascendant damage uh, that is being dealt here. And now there is uh, pretty much one more train left to go. And uh, Alrak is going to be making his way. He's just going to wait for his ascendants to remax out on their energy. And now they are good to go and deal with this next train here. Alrak is going to use a power me. Just jumps into the front here. A bunch of psionic orbs go down as well. And now the ascendants are going to end up mind blasting this train. And this train ends up going down as well. So far, uh, 23,000 damage dealt by uh, Zigara onto the train, 26,000 damage from Alarak, and this damage is just going to keep going up. The amount of uh, damage output the Ascents are capable of pulling off is just insane, and uh, very, very important to use Ascents on this map, because this, is probably, this map is probably one of the best maps for Ascents to use. It's long, which means you get the payout for a, a high-tech unit, and uh, the objective is also a unit which can be used, uh, which uh, which you can use mind blast on. So it is very very beneficial. So Gar is on this side, just uh, just clearing out some of the static defenses that Amon is putting down. And now Alrak is in position for this next attack wave, I believe. Over here, a bunch of psionic orbs go down, and that attack wave just instantly gets deleted. Nothing comes out of the carriers because everything that comes out of the carriers instantly dies. And the carriers go down, and that is. Uh, that is basically Alarak for you on this mission. Alarak is fooling a lot of gas, but there will be another warp of Ascendants uh, sometime soon. One of the things that is important though is to make sure that you have enough supplicants. If you run out of supplicants, your Ascendants are going to be completely useless. So one of the priorities here for Alarak is, you know, you make sure you have enough uh, Ascendants, obviously, but you have to make sure you have enough supplicants to keep these Ascendants fed. And now there is another train that will be coming up from down here. And uh, yeah, I think Zagar is just going to smash all the banelings in there. There is uh, something else that is uh, harassing these here. Now you can see a bunch of Sion orbs go down. Instantly that area gets uh, completely cleaned up here. And uh, now there is a train. And now this train is just going to get mind blasted by a lot of the ascents. You can see the amount of damage output there. And uh, there is 35,000 damage. 36,000 from the uh, from Alarak and 30,000 on... Uh, on Zagara's side, and Zagara is basically just like just a clicking the the banelings onto the train here. There's really, in general, if you are playing on the random queue, uh, you should not be doing that because that is a waste of banelings. But like I said, uh, both players here know what they're doing for the most part. I know CG knows what he's doing, but you know Alrak might not know what he's doing. But uh, yeah, for the most part. You don't really want to smash your banelings into the trains, but, you know, chance of losing this mission. This mission is very, very easy and very straightforward. Um, it's not really... You, you can just have some fun here with uh, whatever. So we can see here that Zagara is uh, producing a bunch of corruptors, and this is just basically to deal with the uh, with the uh, carriers and the air units that are uh, are over there. Alarak is already in position, as you can see here. He's up to a total of 30 ascendants right now. Like I said, I'm just having some fun. And this is probably the most fun mission for Alarak, just because you get to make a lot of sense and just wreck basically everything that just looks at Alarak. So there we go. With the attack wave will be coming up, a bunch of preemptive Sinaog Orbs come up, instantly ends up deleting a lot of these carries here. Whatever is left will be cleaned up by uh, by Zagar's army. And uh, there you go. As you can see, these ascents are eating a lot of the supplicants. So Alarak is actually run is actually running out of minerals right now because of the uh, of the sheer number of sense that he has. So. Uh, now you can see the ascents are starting to glow red. So in this in this uh, scenario, what you want to do is you might want to manually like click ascendants that are not maxed out and just uh, get them to max out. So as long as they're glowing red, that means they're at a you know, reasonably enough. It's a good rule of thumb. They're at a reasonably enough power level that you don't really need to sacrifice any more manually on them. You can see here more sign orbs go down, instantly clear out a lot of these carriers and whatever's left gets cleaned up by the scourge and uh, the uh, the corruptors. See these mind blasts instantly going down on this train. Instantly one shots that train as well, and uh, there you go. That's 49. That's 50,000 damage now on uh, on Alarak with 35,000 on uh, Zigara's side. Zigara will be over here now and just sort of start pushing and harassing the space. Just clean up the side. 
and uh, Alrak will be making his way down here now. He's pretty much good to go. Uh, you can see a bunch of uh, Sion Corps go down just to clean up the uh, the train escort. And uh, now that that is all cleaned up, all Mind Blasts go down onto this train and the amount of damage just is absolutely insane. Mind Blast is on cooldown, so unfortunately he was not able to clean up the train all in one go, but at least in one rapid fire go. But there we go. That is that. Total of 60,000 train damage and 41,000 for Zagara right now. Zagara is going to be pushing in here again just to try and harass the space. Uh, Zagara is basically okay, doesn't really need uh, much, uh, much assistance from this. And now this most objective train is also going to go down. You can see the amount of damage that these sends do. It is actually terrifying how much damage this sentence can, uh, can be dealing with. I think Zagara is waiting for. I I think the attack wave will end up spawning on this side, yeah, so the attack wave spawns on this side, instantly spawn camped, instantly wiped out by a lot of the units here. Unfortunately, not enough anti-air, not enough scourge for Zagara. Uh, this is usually why I prefer to go for... Uh... So this attack wave now is kind of bugged, so Alarak is trying to intercept this attack wave, but unfortunately this attack wave just decides, you know what, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna run across over here. So, uh, that's somewhat unfortunate. So, uh... This attack wave will come back, by the way. It, it goes to the edge of the map and then comes back. So it just doesn't loop around like that. That's basically what I meant. It just loops around. It's it, it's some weird thing with the AI, I'm not really sure what happens there. But uh, Alrak is now in position and he's ready to deal with the final train that will be spawning on this side. So that is the last train. A bunch of Sionic orbs go down here just to end up weakening this side. And it clears out the stack. But again, like I said, the armies are just completely overwhelming here. And now this last train, and a lot of Mind Blasts are going down here on this train, and it, the train's pretty much all gone now. So yeah, that's 87, 88,000 damage on Alrak, and 46,000 damage from Zagara, and that is the last train gone, and that is GG.